Let's go. So thank you for being here for this talk on Web Component. I am going to begin by introducing myself. My name is Horacio González. As you can guess for my accent and all that, I am Spanish, but I live in France. So my English accent shares the worst traits of Spanish and French accents. I hope you are going to forgive me. <laughs> I am a developer <laughs> before everything. I work at OBH, an European hosting and cloud provider. And I am a developer advocate, developer evangelist, DevRel. So my job is, a part of my job is going to conference, talk, talk with developers as you, and maybe when you will need to create a new application, you are going to think, well, I could put it in Amazon or in Google, but why not in a European cloud provider like OVH? So if you have cloud needs, if you want to know more about us, please talk to me after the talk. And I am also rather involved in the community. So, uh, what is the laser? Ah. So, I am a member of the Java User Group, Google Developer Group, and all that in France. And I am also a Google Developer Expert in Web Technologies and Flutter. So, I am going to talk about Web Component. I am going to show a lot of code. Please, don't try to understand the code in my slides. I, am, I put the code only as a talking point. So if you want to see the code of, of everything I am going to show, you can go to, to my GitHub, Lost in Brittany, because I live in Brittany region in France, and I arrived there almost by luck. So I am kind of lost there, lost in Brittany. <coughs> so why do I? Why, why do I speak about Web Component here today? Well, several years ago, I began to play a lot with Polymer, a Web Component framework, a Web Component library. And I began to speak about that after that was the, I kept in the map of the places where I spoke, but after a while I got bored. It, um, there are many points missing. So I went to uh, every conference in France, in Belgium, speaking about with Polymer. I, uh, the book components are great, it's a true revolution. You are going to change the way you develop front-end application. But always, uh, you can build your things brick by brick. But at the end, people always ask me something. Yeah, the idea is good on paper, it's wonderful. But that it work in real life. <laughs> so after a while, I decided uh, the time for a talk about what's our web component is gone. Now we need to show that it works. It's a mature technology. There are many libraries. They are support in all major browsers. It's time to begin to show that the promise of web component are true. So I decided to show in this talk one part of the promise of Web Component. You can use Web Component of any library, and they are going to work together. And you can put them in most framework, in any modern framework, and they are going to work. My, show, uh, my work today is to show you that it, that's true. So let's begin with Web Components. Who here has already done something with Web, com with web Components? Besides. OK, not a lot of people. Who here know what are web components? Yeah, so I guess it's a good thing that I began by that. So web components are a new web standard. They are currently, the, they were defined three, four years ago after years of, draft, of drafting. And now they are implemented in all major browsers. But what are they? There are, if you have done backend development, you are used to concepts like reuse of code, using libraries, using other piece of code in your new application. You understand that modularization is a good thing. If you are a backend developer, you understand that you can change 
libraries, but you can still reuse your, your code. In front-end development, things weren't like that. How many people here had done some Angular at the beginning, Angular 1? And what did happen when Angular 2 was released? You took all your wonderful directives, all your nice pretty code, and you put it in the trash bin. Yeah, nice. Well done. And when you decided to go to React, that you took your shiny Angular 2 code and you put it in the trash bin. And tomorrow you are going to try Vue, because Vue is the next uh, happy framework. So you are going to take your React code and that's a pity. You, uh, you don't want to record time after time the same code. So web components are giving to the front-end development the same thing that back-end development has got for 40 years. Modularization, isolation, encapsulation, the idea of you can, you can build your widgets, your graphic elements with the, your current favorite library. Tomorrow you change your favorite library you are going to write other components, but they are going to work with your old component, components. And then you are going to do very complex apps in the shiny framework of the moment. All your web component, you are going to drop them in your app, and they are going to work. And when the shiny framework changes, you take your components, you put them in the new framework, and they are going to work. That's the web component promise. That's why I say that web components are going to change the way how applications are done. Because everybody who has done front-end for the last five years understands the JavaScript fatigue. The idea of, yeah, this year I am going to have to learn three frameworks, and I are going to migrate four old apps, and I am going to rewrite everything each time. So the idea is, if you begin to modularize your application and have front-end widget that you can reuse, you aren't going to need to change things as fast as overall. When you change, you, are, you won't need to record everything. So that's a basic web component. They extend a HTML element. It's a basic class in the stand, uh, web component standard. So I'm telling, I am creating an element called my element that will be a new HTML element. That's a web component. You are going to create your own HTML elements. So, there is a constructor. There is some life cycle methods in order to initialize things. And then there is this custom element one define. So you are going to say to your browser, Hey, I am going to create a new HTML tag, my dash element. And this tag, you are going to look at this class in order to understand its behavior. And then, after that, your browser has a new HTML tag in, there, in its register, and you can use it everywhere in your code. So you can create your own tags. You can add your behavior. There is a whole set of life cycle, life cycle callbacks in order to customize your element. And you put the tag in anywhere in your application as another HTML tag in your template, in your ES6, everywhere. And the browser, the browser will upgrade that according to the definition of your element. There are some things that come for free with web components. The first one is Shadow DOM. It is the idea of you can encapsulate the look of your elements. You can encapsulate the CSS styles of your element. You can define how do you want your element to look, and the styles you define inside your element won't bled outside your element. They will keep encapsulate it inside. You are going to get also, because you are doing with modern JavaScript, encapsulated or scoped JavaScript. 
and you are going to be able to pass information to and from the web component in order to make it communicate with the outside. So, for example, in order to add Shadow DOM, you are going to, this your, to tell to your element that you are going to attach a Shadow DOM, and then you are going to put the content inside the Shadow DOM. Okay. So, I don't want uh, to, to tell, I want to show also, so please wait a second. Let's try some live code showing. Here you have, so, here you have two elements. The first one, oh, you see in the body, and you aren't seeing nothing because, yeah, that's better. In the body of my page, Ilya, my element tag, and then my browser has understood it's a web component, and inside it has put what I did it to put inside. Hello, code motion. And here you have the second one with the shadow DOM. When the shadow DOM is activated, the content is put inside, but the browser showed me there is a barrier, a frontier, the shadow no frontier. Everything I declare inside, the style will keep inside. So I ask my browser to show it, and you have the content. Until there, okay, I don't know what can I do with that, but okay, nice. There are some uh, lifecycle calls, but... Let's do something with that. So I told myself, yeah, let's begin with something simple, a clicker, a button. In, inside my component, there will be a button. And when you click on, click on the button, you are going to increase a counter and show the current value of the counter. OK. So I told myself, OK, so I begin by, by extending the element. I am going to put a shadow DOM to encapsulate my style. And then we begin to see that the standard, it has been made by people who love standards. And standards are rather verbose, rather rigid, and you need to write a lot of code for small things. For example, you want to listen to the counter HTML attribute. I, I want to be able to set a value from the outside. So I need to tell the element, hey, you need to look at the attribute counter, and when it changes, you need to change the property counter to the new value of the attribute counter. OK, why not? And then you need to, you need to put getter and setter in order to be able to change the attribute when you change the property. So we have HTML attributes. As JavaScript properties, but there is no banding between them. It's manual banding. And then, OK, I need to render the element. And then we have the wonderful JavaScript DOM model. When you begin to add things to the model, add the styles, oh my god, it's boring. <laughs> but it works. I have a counter, I can click. OK, it's complicated, it's boring, and you aren't going to use that in the real life. But you have a web component. As you can guess, if it was that, that I wouldn't be here in order to talk, to talk about such a boring technology. So what made web component interesting? The idea that there are many people who have taken the standard as a base and they have added syntactic sugar, things that made developing web component easier and enjoying. And they have created web component libraries, lots of web component libraries. Personally, I have tested nine or 11, 11 <laughs> different. And each one has a flavor, some different sugar that made things easier for different kinds of developers. I am beginning with Polymer because it was the first and because I really like it. It's a well-written uh, library. So 
What do polymer do? The first thing, it gives you declarative syntax. If you have done Angular, if, if you have done Vue, you know declarative syntax. For me, it's way better in order to create my component. Hey, here I am going to give you the look of my component, the template, with the style that we get inside the component and the and the components that are inside, in this case, a button and a counter. And we are also going to do some data binding in a similar way that Angular. And then, when we have the look, we have the behavior in JavaScript. So, instead of extending an HTML element, we are extending a Polymer element. It's a specialized subclass of HTML element. And then you are going to tell it what will be your tag. You are going to tell it what properties do you want to link with attributes. So you have A. You are going to look at the counter attribute. You are going to link, in to the, to link it to the counter JavaScript property. And it will be a number. So as the attribute it's a string, you are going to parse it to make it a number when you, when you use it. And then, here I had an on-click listener, so if somebody clicks on the button, I call the increment method. So I have an increment method. It's way easier, it's more fun, and it works. So, for me, and I love the definition for one of the Polymer engineers. Polymer is to the web component standard like jQuery was 10 years ago to the web development. It isn't necessary, it isn't compulsory, but it makes things way faster, easier, and more fun. It's syntactic sugar. But, and that's the great thing, the component, the boring component I create with the standard and the new component I create with Polymer, they, work, they both work together. So, as before, let's do some showing. Step C, no, four, I think, or five. No, I, no, that's a bigger one. Four. Wait a second. So here I have a container that only is doing the listening to the value here and here and sharing it. And inside there is a polymer counter and the normal counter. And then when I click, each one is sending an event to the outside and the global application is getting the event and sharing it to the others. So I have two technologies, wholly different. The Polymer one with the declarative syntax and everything. The counter in JavaScript with my uh, ugly definition and they are working. How are they working? They are working because they all follow the same communication pattern, a pattern that has been written in the standard, a standard way of communication, the same one that is used by, by most modern frameworks today, a React-compatible, Vue-compatible, Angular-compatible pattern. When you are going to send information to your component, you are going to use attributes or JavaScript properties, and when your component need to communicate with the outside, instead of calling things in the outside, it, he is, it is going to push an event. And the outside, you can catch the event you need and do something. Look, it is a pattern that you can use with a Redux library. It's a pattern that you can use with uh, Angular Event Listener. It's a pattern that you can use with plain old JavaScript. And 
as every web component is going to communicate in the same way, and what is inside of the component is a standard, they are going to work. Each one is going to load their syntactic sugar. I am going to load the polymer library for my polymer element, no library for the sample one, but they are going to be fully interoperable. So, as I told you before, Polymer was only the first web component library. There are tons and tons at each web component library targets a different kind of developer. So if you are more of a React person, you will find that there are web component libraries that follow React patterns with GSX, with, with uh, CSS in JavaScript, with all the things that real developers like. If you are more of an Angular person, well, Polymer will be maybe the best solution. If you want something very, very light, but you still want some declarative and some data binding, there are other libraries. And you can use one library today in your current project, use another for your next project, but you will still be able to get the components of the old project and use them in the new project. That's the idea, that's the great advantage of Web Component. So we are going to look today at four different uh, libraries beside Polymer. But there are, only, there are only the only alternatives. Today, most big frameworks understand that Web Components are important. Be why? Because if you like Angular, you are going to try to use Angular for most projects. But for Angular, almost half of developers like it, good, and the other half of developers dislike it. React, same thing, you think same thing. Today, most, most frameworks have a very vocal supporters and very vocal haters. So, today frameworks try to be able to produce true web components to facilitate migration, to try to do, okay, in your last project you use React, but today you want to use Angular, but you want to be sure that tomorrow you can change to the next framework. So, we as Angular, we are going to give you True web components, you can do your application today with Angular, and tomorrow, when you will change, you can still export your Angular component as web component and use them in your node technology. You will be able to migrate slowly, inside and outside. So, for example, Angular has a nice Angular Elements project. Today, it generates true web components for, for your Angular component, Okay, they are a bit fat components, they are a lot of things inside, but it's going to get better and better, and it works. V, there are V component wrapper. React, there are uh, several projects in order to export React component as web component. So, every modern framework begins to join the web component club. Let's begin with one small library, a slim, a slim GIS. Well, Slim GIS was a library made by some people who love Polymer, but, find it, but found it a bit too fat. Polymer offered a lot of sugar. And at, the mom at that moment, Polymer was a monolith. You took all Polymer or not at all. Today. Polymer is a set of mixing. You can mix and get the part you want. But when Slim began, Polymer was a library. You took it in the world. So they decided to take the good for them, the good part of Polymer, and separate them, create a very lightweight library, very fast, and make it uh, the base of a lightweight uh, micro framework. So, basically, it's the standard web component plus declarative syntax plus, plus data binding and optional shadow DOM. 
It means you can have the encapsulation, the shadow DOM, but if you want to have an even faster component, you can say, hey, I don't want encapsulation. My style, I will make them safe by using the right selectors. So you can take the shadow DOM part and make things even smaller. And then creating a slim component, well, by you are going to use a, to create a slim tag with the tag name with a declarative template and the definition of the element. The only thing they do to make things faster, the data binding is a magic, it's a magical. If you want to put data binding in one element, you need to declare that you are going to bind this element. So you can use the data binding standard syntax, but, but only if you bind this element. That makes that the library don't observe the whole template, but only the part that will change, that make it faster and lighter. And the behavior, oh, it's rather similar to the standard web component. You still need to do the attribute property binding manually, but it's still light. So as I have the data binding, I can add to the button an on-click listener, and I will increase the counter, send the event. OK. It's fast. It's easy. Let's go to Bram JS. It was another project almost at the same time that Slim JS, with the same concern to make things faster and lighter. And they, they, they have written it in another word, different way. But, but at the end, they are rather similar. They are going to have lightweight, lightweight web component library with declarative syntax, data binding, optional shadow DOM, but this one is really tiny. It isn't very well documented. In order to, be, to build the big things with it, you will need to go depth than in the code, but it works. And if you need something very, very fast, it can be a good idea. So for my counter, it's rather similar, a template. And then you are going to extend a Bram element. You are going to do the attribute and property binding. You are going to have some template and event getter in order to set the template and set and listen to the event, but it seems rather similar. Okay, let's change. Now let's say you have done some React or Preact or other library framework like that, and you dislike declarative syntax and you want something more adapted to your way of doing things. You want web component that you can use in a React application and they feel like React component almost. Then you can look at Escape. Escape is a very light library that has a set of different renderers. You can use Preact as renderer, you can, you can use a customized internal skate renderer, or you can use simply a string, a bar string as renderer. So you can write them in many different ways. It's very, very fast. Most renderers use virtual DOM in order to be sure that they are very fast and Change in the template aren't penalizing your performance. You can customize them as you want, and especially, well, you can have a syntax that you like. So you have a escape counter. I am, I am going to use the component uh, renderer, so the standard one. There is a constructor. You declare the properties you are going to use in your renderer. So when one of these properties, oh, sorry, the only one with the counter property change, it, the component knows that he needs to re-render the component. 
And if any other thing change, no rendering will be done. You can use also computed properties, watchers, and other things, but at the base, there is the same, comport the same behavior that with real components. And the render, here I am using JavaScript uh, bar string, but you can also use a Preact or JSX renderer. So I am going to inject the style, and then I'm going to define my element with the usual interpolation of a string. So with my con when my counter changes, I am going to do a new render, and the new value will be shown. And then I am going to put the increase of the element. OK. I added the listener here. Well, let's change now. I am going to show you what I think will be one of the most used web component framework in the next year or in the next two years, a stencil. Do you know, do you know Ionic framework? It's a framework to do hybrid uh, application. You write your web application, an Angular web application. You are going to use a stencil components and a stencil toolkit. And you are going to generate a native Android and iOS version of your application that you can put on Android, uh, on Play Store, or on Apple Store. So it's very used. There are many applications today in the store that aren't real native application, but web application in an hybrid mode. And Ionic is going to change again to make things uh, some a bit of history. Android was at the beginning an Angular 1 uh, project. And when Angular 2 arrived, they took all three years of work and put it in the trash bin. And they decided, OK, we are going to do it again. Bah, uh, let's go with Angular 2. They rebuild everything in Angular 2. And, as, and three years ago, they saw a thing. They, are in, they were only arriving to one-third, one one-fourth of developers, 25%, 33%. Why? Because many developers dislike Angular. Hey, but it, it isn't about Angular. It is about making native application with web technology. Yeah, but I don't like Angular. So now, they are going to rewrite, they are, in, they are rewriting it uh, last time, and they are going to use web components. Why? Because they are going to put everything as web components, so you as developer, we believe you will be able to use Ionic in Angular, in React, or in not framework at all, as you want. So in order to do that, they wanted to use web components, but they wanted then very, very proche, very, very near the standard, very, very fast, and with a nice toolkit. Because after years of Angular 2, they like it TypeScript, and they like it their, their toolkit. So they, they created their own library. No, it isn't a library. Framework, no. They created a web component compiler. So you are going to write your component in a in a way that reminds the Angular components, but using GSX for the rendering and taking the best idea of different framework. And you are going to compile your components, and it's going to generate native web components, standard web components, well optimized, fast, light, and that work everywhere. Of course, they are web components. So you are going to get a virtual DOM and a sync rendering. You are going to have a reactive data binding. So in, for the performance, it's uh, the best things we have right now. They, you are going to write down in TypeScript. So you can write down in normal JavaScript, or you can use types and all the decorator you want. And the rendering is done in GSX. 
and you are going to get some perks for free. Server-side rendering is going to generate a full static view of your components, view of your components, that will be sent to the browser, so you will have a very fast uh, uh, rendering of your component, and then this component will be hydrated. All the behavior will be injected after that, after that, so the user experience will be better than with all the other web component technologies. So, oh, I only have four minutes. Yeah, you can create a project. It's a beta to today, but you can begin to create the project. It's a beta, but I have already do four production applications with it. So it's a very stable beta. You can really play with them, you can really build things with it. And it works really, really well, really, really well in both web and native way. So you are going to create your component. There are extensions in order to be sure that everything works in your favorite editor. You are going to use a GS6 declarative uh, syntax. You have decorators to make things easier, a bit like in Angular. So you have decorators for the properties, for the events, for everything. And then you have the element. I haven't time to go depth on that. But the idea is, OK, I have done the same element in all the technologies we have seen. I am going to put them in a view web application. And let's see if it works. Uh, today, I have an idea. Last time I did this talk was three months ago. All the web component uh, version has changed. So today, after lunch, I was at the speaker room. I decided to update everything. I wasn't sure of myself. I had a Git backup, but, but everything worked. <laughs> uh, Slim.js has changed. Right now, it's uh, version 3. It's faster. It's more simple. I have some things to change. But my old Slim component worked alongside with the new one, so I was happy. I used always the standard pattern. Here I had an animation that I don't want to show, but I told you before, everything inside as an attribute or property and events for the outside. And I have two minutes. Let's see if I am able to make it work. So. Here you have the six component. Polymer one, the vanilla web component, the slim component, that inside there is no shadow DOM because I wanted it the more sample. The Bram web component, here I put the shadow DOM. The skate web component, and the extensive web component. And all of them send the event. The global view application shares the event, and the other changes its value. So in order to show a little bit of code, Here I am, change, I am changing the different com web component library and my components. And here I have a standard view ap application with its template using a standard view component listening and a standard property binding. And then the data function, the method, I am creating the application. And I am using the view component with all the web components inside. You can do the same thing with Angular, using Angular syntax, or with React, using React syntax, or without component at all, using only plain old JavaScript things. And I only have 
seven seconds. So I think it's the moment to say you thank you very, very much. <laughs>